Hey guys, Scott here. Uh, today I want to talk about a couple of issues with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game uh, in hopes that this could serve as like a comprehensive guide for the devs on things that a lot of the community found a little problematic with the game. I want to make it clear that I don't want this game to be DBD, so a lot of these changes have nothing to do with that game in particular. They're just things overall that I think are sort of seen as universally kind of broken and um, we should maybe look at addressing that. Obviously, the game itself was just a tech test. A lot of stuff in the game like perks weren't even active very limited on maps and stuff like that so take all this with a grain of salt these are just little minor suggestions um and it shouldn't really be seen as anything more than that um but i just jotted down a couple of stuff in notepad as i was playing over the the entire technical test and i played quite a bit because it was very very fun and i just want to see the game be as fun as it can be so uh the first thing connie the character herself uh is a little too strong her ability where she can open locks faster is just nice in general she just passively interacts with basically everything faster and then her focus ability, where she actually like right clicks, actually just lets you basically instantly break a lock. In a game where you might only have to break two locks to just escape the map, we have scenarios where people are doing speed runs where they can escape with Connie in less than two minutes, which is, in my opinion, kind of ridiculous. You shouldn't be able to end the match in two minutes. It's not ending the match, but if anyone is following her, then they can all escape too. So Connie, a little bit overtuned. Um, I'm not sure what they can do. I'm sure they have a better idea. I'm just bringing up the fact that I think everyone agrees Connie is probably a little bit too strong with her ability to unlock things nearly instantly. I had someone, as I was stabbing them with the hitchhiker, went up to an exit gate, and then I stabbed them, and in between the second and third stab, they opened an exit gate instantly and just left. And that felt really bad. I feel like that shouldn't ever be able to happen. So I'm not sure what they can do about it, but Connie, uh, a little too strong. I think all the other characters in the test were fine. Um, Leland is obnoxious, but not overpowered in my opinion, because his stun has a very, very long cooldown. And, um, you know, I, I think because of the cooldown being so long, it just basically saves himself or someone else. It's, it's fine. Uh, Sunny's ability is going to be way more useful when there are teammates to communicate with, or you have friends to play with. It's going to be a lot better for that. He's basically like the cook of survivors. Um, so although he seemed a bit underwhelming in the test, it's mostly because you couldn't play with friends and you couldn't uh, communicate that well. You could still do voice chat and stuff, but I think once communication with friends gets better, Sunny will be seen as a lot stronger. Honest power is fine. Um, I think less damage taken is fine. All the characters were okay, except Connie, which is a little too strong in my opinion. Um, next is the door stuns. This is something that a lot of people did not touch on because not that many people knew how to abuse it. When I was playing Killer, very few people knew how to abuse the door stuns. But basically, if you're unaware... You can basically chain stun a killer for like 30 seconds in doorways. Doorways are extremely overpowered for survivor and very underwhelming for killer. So if you basically camp a closed door, you can open it in the killer's face and just knock them on their ass. It's absolutely hilarious and that needs to stay in the game because it's funny, but there needs to be protections involved. And the problem with this whole mechanic is if the killer ends up playing it correctly and opens the door and slams it in the survivor's face, there's no penalty. The survivor gets knocked to the ground, but you can't hit them because your weapon just swings over where they are. At the very most, once they stand up, you can, like, get a hit. And as Bubba, that's good because he does a lot of damage. But for everyone else, getting one hit at risk of being stunned for 80 minutes, it's not worth it. It, it doesn't, like, add up. So I think killers should also have an equal reward for slamming a survivor with a door as the survivors get, you know, humiliating them and stunning them for five seconds. And the thing is... The doors are very, very janky. I know this is a technical test and they will probably make that better, but they're very janky. Sometimes a door will slam directly through someone and nothing ha will happen. Sometimes they'll slam the door and they'll fall down in the opposite direction and phase through the door. It's absolutely hilarious and it led to some of the funniest clips ever. But here's an example of what I'm talking about and how ridiculous you can be with doors. <laughs> Wait, you don't have to time it? <laughs> you have to time it with the slams, but... <laughs> Additionally, there needs to be some sort of diminishing return for the amount of stuns that you can do. Because as a Leland, you can stun someone with a door, run up behind them, stab them with a bone spike, 
as they're getting unstunned with that, then you can stun them with the door again. If that is not available because they fell out of the door, then you can use Leland's stun to just stun them. And then out of that stun, you can bone spike them again. And then you can stun them with the door again. You can basically stun lock a killer until the end of the game. And it's to the point where Leland is a scarier killer than all the killers in this game. And they need to have some form of diminishing returns. Like make it so you're immune to stuns after, you know, you've been stunned for five seconds just for a few seconds. Just like how MMOs do it with like, you know, chain stuns. Or make it so that, you know, the next stun is halved and then, then the subsequent stun after that is like, you know, 10%. And then the fourth one would be you immune entirely or whatever. Just something like that. Some diminishing returns on the disables. Because if it's only been a couple of days and survivors are learning how to bully individual killers that quickly, I can't imagine what they're going to do once they actually really learn. And sure, you can call your teammates over. But at the same time, if you're just by yourself, it's not like they can teleport to you. You can basically be stunned for 20, 30 seconds. And... I don't even care about balance. I don't care about winning or losing. No one likes being incapacitated for 30 seconds due to the, uh, the actions of another player. It always feels bad. That's why MMOs and stuff like that have diminishing returns. That's why all these things are in place, but this game does not have that. It really needs that type of system. Uh, next is the communication required. Um, for example, Cook is a very good character because he can locate survivors, and that's basically his main idea. He can locate people. But the whole thing is you need to communicate with your teammates for that to be valuable information. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that most people don't want to talk to strangers on the internet. That's just how the internet is. You're going to have more people than not. You shouldn't make a character or the game reliant on voice comms. Voice comms should enhance your experience and make your coordination better. You shouldn't make it reliant on it. And because of that, they should have some type of ping system. So if Cook finds someone, they can ping the general area that they were rather than see the ore directly, which might be too strong. Just some type of ping system, I think, would be perfect. I think games that are built around having very good communication and stuff like that. I feel like that's one of the reasons VHS didn't do, uh, do very well because games that are built around sort of having that competitive communication as the baseline are destined to not do super well uh, because most people are shy and just don't want to talk on the internet. So I think a ping system like that could rectify that a lot and killers like Cook wouldn't be dodged every time because they would actually have a use now because you can point out to your teammates exactly or roughly where someone is. And um, I think that would just be overall good. That does bring us to Cook. Cook is very frustrating to play. He is the killer that has the echolocation with hearing. He's very frustrating to play in the technical test because A, communication is lacking, and B, even if you do communicate, people are new to the game, so they don't even know what the hell you're talking about. You can say, hey, there's someone by the back garden gate or something like that, and they'll go, I don't know what that means, and so you're basically useless. So do I think there's a problem with Cook? No, not really. I think the game itself should shift around Cook and have more easy communication without actually requiring voice. Um, but I think Cook is fine. Maybe he could use a little bit more stamina because it is frustrating as hell. Like being at one end of the, end of the map and not being able to catch up with somebody that's just running right in front of you. And then when you finally do get there, Leland just tackles you or something like that, or someone just bone spikes you. Um, he could do, I, I get he's the old man and he's the support class. I truly get the role that they're going for, but he's got to be like a little faster, man. You can loop him around objects that are not even loops. They're just like... <laughs> like a tire or something. It's it's pretty brutal. Um, so maybe make him a little bit faster. Uh, next, we got to talk about the fuse box. Towards the end of the technical test, people were starting to realize that, in fact, there are not exits that are the generator and car battery escapes. There's the valve pressure one, and then there's the fuse box one. Now, on the far map, the fuse box escape, uh, escape is honestly busted as hell. As Connie, you can get out of the basement rush to the fuse box, go upstairs, open it, and get back downstairs, and you can be escaping in a minute and 30 seconds. It's kind of ridiculous, and if the killers, honestly, the killers are still setting up at that point. You still have Hitchhiker running back and forth to actually, like, turn on the generators and batteries. You shouldn't be able to escape before they've even begun setting up the map, and I don't know how they're going to change that, because on this map, the um, fuse box is not the issue. It's the valve, the water pressure one, um, but at least, at the very least, the killer can do something about that and get to it and kind of stop it. The fuse box one, you basically get no warning. By the time you hear that the basement gate is opened, if you're not in the house ready to go and stop them, they're out. And hell, sometimes even if you are in the house ready to go and stop them, they can just beeline it. Yeah, you'll hit them a few times, but they can just sprint to the exit gate before you can even get there. So I don't know if maybe you need a notification for the killers that the fuse box has begun to be opened or something like that, but you need to give them a tiny bit more heads up because by the time you're able to physically get there, they can just tank hits and run out and you can't do shit about it. So Bubba's probably the only one that can catch them and actually down them if they just run in a straight line. But even then, once you get in the basement, it's very, very safe. 
This game is sort of the opposite of DBD. The basement is the safest place in the game for the survivors because there's so many infinite loops and stuff like that, which are a bit more acceptable because this is not a 1v4 game. It's a 3v4 game. Um, but the basement is so safe that I've almost found it better as Bubba to not even try downing people in the beginning, just patrol exit gates and delay them opening the gates as much as possible. Uh, because actually downing good survivors as Bubba in the basement is basically impossible. You'll, you'll never catch them. Um, but you can delay people by blocking the exits and stuff like that. So anyway, going off on a tangent there. Uh, next, I think the whole iframes going in vaults and stuff like that, they're too lenient. This is one of the main frustrating features I had with the game Home Sweet Home Survive, where basically as soon as a survivor touches a crack in the wall and starts going through it, you can't damage them anymore. Your attacks will physically go directly through them. And although Bubba has this thrust mechanic where he can shove his chainsaw through that area and try to hit them, it doesn't do anything. I don't know if it's bugged. It could just be completely bugged, but thrusting does absolutely nothing. As soon as the survivors start shimmying through a, a doorway, they're basically just invincible. And it's very frustrating feedback to have your chainsaw physically go through their model, but nothing happens. So I do think they need to address that and make those iframes start maybe a bit later in the animation because, yeah, it never feels good swinging through somebody and nothing happens. Again, this has nothing to do with balance. I'm just talking about things that feel good to play. It does not feel good to hit someone and nothing happens. Um, additionally, the uh, areas where you can crawl through on the floor, but um, Cook can like close them. Cook closing them just does nothing because you can open them as fast as they're closed and crawl through it in basically the same action. So closing those does nothing. They probably didn't make closing them stronger. Now Bubba can destroy them entirely, which is great, uh, but it takes a very long time. And I'd say they should make opening those closed ones take a bit longer because you can literally do it in half a second to the point where it's it doesn't do anything. Um, what else do I have on the list? Bubba Thrust useless. Um, aura reading needs more distance. Right now, you can't see blood on the map unless you're very, very close to it when you use the aura reading ability with your middle mouse button as killer. Just make that bigger. I don't know why you'd be limited to having, you know, be like three meters or something. You can see your teammates from across the map, so why can't you see blood across the map? It doesn't, you know, I, I don't see a reason to not make that bigger. Uh, the blood thing brings us to Grandpa. Grandpa right now is basically useless. He doesn't serve any purpose other than at the end of the game making it so you can't stalemate or you don't want to wait you know 20 minutes for the person to bleed out the whole idea with grandpa right now is you're supposed to feed him and periodically he will scream revealing the survivors that are moving at the time but the thing is you get a warning that the scream is about to happen so you just stop moving for one second and then you keep moving you can even keep moving while the scream is happening as long as you're not moving at the start of the scream it basically inconveniences survivors for half a second. And it takes so much time to put the blood into Grandpa to get him up to a point where it's actually very useful, which is the last stage, that it ends up just being a waste of time overall. I, I've never found an actual use for the whole Grandpa mechanic. The only time it's useful is when survivors are brand new and literally do not know what the scream actually means. As soon as you know what it is, you wait a half a second, hear the scream, and keep going. It does nothing. It doesn't accomplish anything. So the whole Grandpa mechanic needs to be made stronger. Now, it is very possible that perks will be tied to this, and maybe at stage three, w grandpa or whatever, there is going to be some variant, you know, effect or something like that. So it's too soon for me to personally make a comment on that because perks could be things that buff grandpa. And if that's the case, well, then this whole point doesn't matter because now we'll have more of a reason to actually give blood. And, um, you know, the whole fact that it's sort of irrelevant right now would be moot. So um, I'll wait for a release for that because they, the perks could definitely affect that. But if perks don't affect grandpa, then they do need to look at making him more effective right? Because right now he doesn't do anything to basically everybody except on the last stage. But if you spent the entire game bringing blood to grandpa, you're basically making the game a two before and it's not worth it. So um, what else is there? Uh, the voices. Please let us turn off survivor voices. They're so annoying. Like every two seconds, you just have a survivor. Oh my, oh my God. God. I can't believe I escaped him. Thank God. Oh, madre de Dios. It's like, it's unnecessary. We don't need that. It's it gets old within five seconds of actually starting the game, and it does nothing but serve to just be very annoying. I get atmospherically, it's fine. Give us an option to turn it off. Now, there is a voice volume in the game, and you can do that, but then it turns off the voices of the killers too, which might actually let you locate where they are as Survivor. So you don't want to turn off voices, but those little self-monologue things every five seconds, please let us disable that. It's super annoying. It, it wears out its welcome very quickly. I get it's cinematic and stuff like that, but... If you play the game more than an hour, it's going to get really grating. So let us turn that off. Simple feature. Uh, next is the sounds of doors. Doors basically make no sound. Now, I'm beginning to think this is an intentional choice by the devs because they want you to be able to actually evade a chase. In a game like Dead by Daylight without perks, it's basically impossible to evade a killer once they've actually found you. But in this game, 
due to the lighting being very, very intense um, with shadows and stuff like that. And the fact that basically survivors don't make sound, even when they're injured, they don't really make any sound at all. It's very hard to hear anybody. But doors make zero sound. And that doesn't even like for, it just looks weird. Like I'll have a survivor slam a door in my face and it'll just be like, like you, you just can't hear it. If anything, just for like the feedback of the game, it just looks weird when you slam a door in the face and there's no sound effect. I almost think it's bugged or something. So maybe fix that. I get that they're probably wanting the sounds to be quiet so you have actually a, a chance of hiding in this game and they want to place more of an emphasis on stealth, which trust me, you can hide in this game way better than in a game like DVD, um, but at least make things make some sound effect. So it just seems weird that they don't. Uh, those are really the main issues I had. Overall, these are all sort of minor things, and a lot of these things might not even be issues on the main game's release to begin with. So just a bunch of random suggestions to the devs. I'm sure you guys have thought of most of this by now, but maybe it'll help, maybe not. I don't know. But thanks for watching. See you next time.